Shore Road in Brookhaven, New York, links homes along the coast with the nearby town. But it's become increasingly difficult to guarantee safe passage. We've had several storms recently where the road behind me uh, has been four feet deep with water. In one month in 2018, the road flooded four times. When that happens, not even large trucks can get through. It wasn't always this way. Highway Superintendent Dan LaSquadro says rising sea levels have made storms more damaging. The question now is how much more will they rise in any given period of time? Is there anything we can do to slow that process? And what are we going to do to protect our shorelines and our property because of that? The short-term solution has been to reinforce the road with an angular type of stone made of blasted granite. When the water hits it, uh, it dissipates, it absorbs the energy of the waves, and it helps protect. Longer term, Lasquadro says the road will need to be elevated by a meter or more. Communities across the United States are having to tackle the impact of climate change on their infrastructure. Rising sea levels, increased precipitation, and more extreme weather is putting pressure on the country's roads, bridges, and tunnels. The fourth national climate assessment projects that by 2090, damage to the nation's roads caused by climate change could total $20 billion each year. And up to 6,000 bridges could be threatened by increases in inland precipitation. U.S. ports are also vulnerable, and that could lead to disruptions to global trade. I think it's a big problem, and I think it's getting worse. First of all, we have aging infrastructure in America. Um, we already need billions of dollars of new investment, and now we have climate change, uh, the effects of which are getting worse all the time. Environmental strategist L.G. Holstein says coastal areas may be most vulnerable, but no region will be left unscathed. He says to tackle the problem, the U.S. needs to make a national commitment to fortify its infrastructure against the effects of climate change. That's going to take a lot of work at the state level. But I think it's an issue in which, uh, at the federal level, we can see the political parties perhaps coming together in a way that they uh, often do not, uh, to work collaboratively, to work cooperatively, to make the changes that are needed. We're just getting started. We have a lot more to do. Perhaps the biggest challenge is convincing the U.S. president to take action. Donald Trump has said he's not convinced humans are behind climate change. And when this report by his own government came out in November, he quickly dismissed it. Karina Huber, CGTN, New York.